let's take a look at Newton's first law of motion, also called the law of inertia. So a common way to state this law is an object in motion will remain in motion and an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a net external force. Kind of the classic version of the first law. Another way to state it would be an object's velocity will be constant if there's no net force acting on it. A little shorter, but has the same meaning. Now both of these definitions refer to something called a net force. So let's define that. A net force is the sum of all forces acting on an object. And it's often represented with an F with a little net written next to it, or written as sigma F, where sigma is the summation sign, means you're summing up all of the forces, you're adding them all together. So for instance, if we have an object where there's five newtons to the right acting on it and five newtons to the left acting on it, the net force on that object would be zero newtons. If I have an object where there's 20 newtons to the right and 50 newtons to the left acting on it, then the net force is the sum of those two forces, five newtons to the right. Let's say I have another ob object where there's eight newtons to the right, 16 newtons to the left, 12 newtons up, 12 newtons down. Well, if I add up all of those forces, well, up and down, they cancel out, and left and right, I get eight newtons to the left. So the total force, the net force acting on this object is eight newtons to the left. And then lastly, if I have, let's see, 10 newtons up, 10 newtons down, five newtons right, five newtons left, the net force acting on this is zero newtons. That's the, in the special case where we have a net force equal to zero, we say that the object is in equilibrium. Or another way to say that is that the forces are balanced. So equilibrium, or balanced forces, refers to a situation where the forces all add up to zero. They all cancel out in every direction. So knowing that, let's return to Newton's first law. Newton's first law says that an object's velocity is constant if the net force acting on it is equal to zero. Well, we can take this and kind of write different phrasings of it because let's think about that velocity is constant concept. If the velocity is constant, we can also say that the acceleration is equal to zero. And if the net force is equal to zero, then we can also say that the object is in equilibrium. And we can also say that the forces are balanced. So Newton's first law, we can say in a lot of different ways. We can say an object's velocity is constant if the net force is equal to zero. But we can also say that an object's acceleration is equal to zero if it is in equilibrium. Or we can say the velocity is constant if the forces on the object are balanced. There are multiple ways to state Newton's first law, but the big idea is that an object will not change its velocity if the forces on the object all add up to zero. So, for example, let's say I have a very boring situation. I have just an object sitting on a table, and the object has a normal force of six Newtons up and a gravitational force of six Newtons down. Well, that object is in equilibrium the net force on it is equal to zero. So its velocity will be constant. But I mean, duh, of course it is. It's a block and it's sitting on a table. Nothing else is interacting with it. Its velocity is zero. Nothing's gonna change unless some other force comes along and causes a net force to act upon it. Let's look at a second example. Let's imagine a hockey puck that's sliding across very slick ice. In that case, the hockey puck will feel a gravitational force downward and then a normal force upward caused by the ice. And let's say that they're both two newtons. So the normal force is two newtons upward, gravitational force is two newtons downward. Now this hockey puck is sliding across the ice, so it's probably moving pretty fast. But even though it's moving, it is in equilibrium. It is in equilibrium because the forces are balanced. Because the forces are balanced, and because it's in equilibrium, because the net force is equal to zero, its velocity will be constant. And this kind of situation where the object is moving, but it is in equilibrium, 
has a special term that's called translational equilibrium. So translational equilibrium is a situation where the object is in equilibrium, but it is moving at a constant velocity. Now let's take a look at a different example. Let's say that you're standing in a subway car. And you're standing in the subway car, you're in equilibrium, you're in translational equilibrium because you're moving, and so your velocity is constant. Now, in this situation, let's say that the car suddenly stops. So maybe the car is coming into the station and it suddenly hits the brakes. If the car stops, well, the car may stop, but your velocity will be constant. So, you will keep moving forward until an external net force acts on you. Now, hopefully you are holding on to a pole or something so that the pole can exert a force on you and stop you. But if not, if you're just standing there in the middle of the car, then your velocity is going to stay constant and you're going to keep moving forward until something exerts a force on you. And maybe that's the person that's standing in front of you or maybe it's the wall that's standing in front of you or maybe it's the pole or whatever but you're gonna keep moving forward until a new external force acts upon you, which would then bring you out of equilibrium. And this relates to a concept called inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its velocity. And inertia, it turns out, is proportional to the mass of an object. So if you have more mass, you have more inertia. You have more tendency to resist changes in velocity. So for example, let's imagine you have a mouse and an elephant. Okay, well, the mouse has less mass, the elephant has more mass, unless you have a very weird mouse or a very weird elephant. And the mouse, because it has less mass, that means it has less inertia. And the elephant, because it has more mass, it means it has more inertia. So the mouse, it's easier to change the velocity of the mouse. It has less resistance to changes in its velocity. So you could go up to the mouse and it's pretty easy to change the velocity of a mouse. The elephant, however, has more mass, it has more inertia, it has more resistance to changes in its velocity. So it's relatively difficult to change the velocity of an elephant. And we can relate that to its mass, which is a measure of its inertia.